Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to dive into Pwn Lab. Specifically, we're going to cover AWS S3 enumeration, at least the basics of it. Now, if you want to get into AWS pen testing, one of the key terms you need to understand is what an AWS S3 bucket is. You can read about a bunch of different data breaches that deal with S3 buckets, and maybe let's even begin there. Before we dive into lab, let's read about some real world breaches that happen as a result of misconfigured S3 buckets. S3 buckets are sort of like I think it would be like FTP, but in the cloud. It's a place to store files, but just like FTP, sometimes FTP can be misconfigured to al allow anonymous read or anonymous write access. Well, the same is true about S3 buckets. Now, AWS has gotten a lot better about it, that it, the default setting is now secure, and it gives you a warning message if you misconfigure it. But back in the day, that wasn't the case, and you still discovered this on AWS pen test where an S3 bucket is not configured properly. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Here is the lab. AWS S3 enumeration basics, but let's just go to like AWS S3 bucket breach. And let's let's read a few of these. Here, here's the here's the top 10 worst. Let's just go through these, the top 10 worst. To show that what we're gonna talk about is very much real world. Booz Allen Hamilton. Uh, data <laughs> battlefield imagery and administrator credentials to sensitive systems. The U.S. defense contractor left data publicly accessible through an insecurely configured S3 account. That's what we're going to look at. Containing files related to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which handles battlefield satellite and drone imagery. Right? Not a good idea. In June, U.S. voter records, personal data on about 198 million American voters. A Republican Party-backed big data firm by, by storing them on a wide-open S3 bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, there are our politicians. Dow Jones. Uh, PII of 2.2 million people through a sloppy S3 configuration. Permissions were set to allow anyone with a free AWS account access because when you configure the S3 account, it looks like if you you're locking it down to an aws account but you really it's anyone with an aws account can access the s3 bucket wwe uh pii of about three million wrestling fans verizon wireless pii on six million people sensitive corporate information including login creds for an s3 bucket time warner cable the pentagon accenture national credit federation alter x just want to show like what we're going to talk about this really does happen in the real world with some pretty major breaches. And I'm going to walk you through how that might look in the real world. So here we're given an entry point of a website. Let's go ahead and set up our notes for our scope and everything. So I'm going to open up Cherry Tree. Cherry Tree, why do you reset my default settings? Why can't I open my notes? Those are my notes. What? Oh, maybe I should do open file instead of open folder. That'd be a good starting point, Tyler. You're right, Tyler. Maybe if I wasn't a freaking noob. All right, let me change my preferences. I hate that I have to do this every time. Only in this VM, too. I don't want to highlight the current line. I want my theme to be dark because I'm a hacker. I want my fonts to be bigger because, you know, eyesight. Our code font will do 14. All right, and we'll start a new tab. We'll just call it S3 enumeration. And we want to include our scope here. And we'll go ahead and grab, well, let's grab our scenario because that's our scope. All right, so it's our first day on the red team and you've been tasked with examining a website that was found in the fish employees bookmarks check it out and see where it leads and scope is the company's infrastructure including cloud services so our target website is this one right here so before we run it through like a web proxy like burp or Cato, let's just check out the website All right, so we have huge logistics. We make your transport simple. We have a cost page. Bro, I'm American. I don't know k kilometers. <laughs> Home shift estimate. 
and it fails although this looks like amazon type stuff so that should give us a idea we can look around there's not much to click contact us doesn't do anything all this leads to nothing about home news technically email enumeration up there okay so what should draw our attention right away let, let me actually have you look at it whether you're watching this live or maybe after the fact before i point it out to you i want you to ask yourself the question if you were examining the source code of this website and you know that they might be hosting stuff in the cloud what in the source code might be interesting Not all at once. All right, I'm gonna answer it for you. Justin goes looking up how much of kilometers. <laughs> so what should draw your attention is this s3.amazon.aws and then we have their S3 bucket right here. So this seems to be a static website being hosted in this S3 bucket, which, so we can't seem to be able to see the S3 bucket. zero bytes so we can't actually get anything but we know the name of the s3 bucket right here right so i'm gonna go ahead and grab a screenshot of that which i actually think i need to open up light shot my host computer real quick all right s3 bucket all right there's our s3 bucket and now we can switch over to the command line interface and begin to enumerate this a little bit. Now, to do AWS CLI commands, you do need to install the AWS CLI, which is as easy as sudo apt install AWS, I believe in Kali. I already have it installed, so we can do AWS version, and you can see it here. But I do have these commands memorized because it's pretty common for enumerating buckets. But once again, if you're used to traditional CTFs, think about an FTP server. When you see that port 21 is open on an FTP server, one of the first things you check is this, um, FTP anonymous at target. And the reason you check that is you wanna know, does the FTP server allow anonymous login? And if so, if it allows anonymous login, can we do read or can we do write? Right? If you can read files, you might be able to read sensitive information. If you can write files, well then you might be able to upload some malicious files on the FTP server in order to get a call back, in order to compromise the environment. Well, it's kind of similar with an S3 bucket. One of the first things you wanna check is, hey, is this S3 bucket world readable? If we go to those top 10 lists that we began our video with, a lot of those were breaches because the S3 bucket was misconfigured and they were world readable. So we'll do AWS S3, ls is an s as in list so you think about the linux can land list and then s3 again as like a file protocol and then we're going to drop in the name of the s3 bucket i think and when we do this right away it's probably going to fail uh because it's trying to use our access key id but if we do i think it's no sign request i might have that syntax wrong there we go so that's saying, hey, I don't want to authenticate, do it anonymously. So that's very similar to like the FTP anonymous access. No sign request means check out this S3 bucket, but with anonymous access. And you can see we can actually list it. So we have admin, migration files, shared, static, and then our index. So let's first look at admin. So we can just go like this. All right, we can't do admin. Let's look at migration files. We can't do migration files. Let's look at shared. I think I need my trailing end. Hold up. Let me double check those other ones. I forgot my trailing slash. Okay, no, I can't check migration files. Let me double check admin that we can't access that. But I know for sure we can access shared there. All right, so let's just go back to shared. And in shared, we have a, we have HL migration project.zip. Let me go ahead and back out to um, Pwn Labs and we'll make a directory for S3 enumeration, CD into it. And now we want to copy this zip file from the S3 bucket and see what's going on here. So we'll do this AWS S3 CP for copy. And then we want to grab the same S3 bucket right here. But now we want this file HL 
migrationproject.zip and we want to save it to our current directory so we'll just do a dot there and we'll do no sign request because we want to do it anonymously all right seems like it worked and we can go ahead and unzip this and see what information is in it i'm gonna get a drink of water I will answer a question real quick from Twitch. <clears throat> Hi to Les said, if I switch to CyberSec having web dev background, will I have a hard time in terms of knowledge? I was thinking studying for Security Plus. No, your web dev background will be awesome. Uh, because you, what pen testers do is we often dive into breaking stuff without understanding how to create stuff first. That you have a background on web dev would actually be a huge asset to cybersecurity. But yeah, Security Plus is a, is a really good place to start. I think you have a, a good idea for a path there. Justin Gosley going AFK for a moment. What up, Haircut Fish? Uh, Antec said, tell you're a big inspiration to push further in the cybersecurity world. Thank you, Antec, for the kind words. Haircut Fish said, Tyler, are there any conferences you plan on attending this year? The only in-person conference I'll be at is DEF CON. All right. So we have a migration secret. Let's mouse pad that beast. Okay, we're given some access keys and a secret key. Now, if you're new to AWS, this is essentially a username and a password. I'll show you how to authenticate in that region. We're setting our AWS credit, setting our region, and then we're reading a secret, maybe from Secret Manager. Trying to upload a secret. So this is something with Secret Manager. It appears using these creds. So I will show you how we can authenticate with those creds. Let's call it terminal two and we'll do AWS configure and we can specify a profile and we'll do the profile. I don't know, S3 Enum maybe. And now it's going to ask us, whoops, it's going to ask us for our access key. So we'll copy that, drop it there. We will copy our secret key. And then our region was US East one, wasn't it? Yeah. If I could spell, we can hit enter on that. And now we can do the who am I, at least AWS's version of who am I. And that is AWS STS get caller identity. And then we can specify the profile that we're using, which is S3 Enum or our account. And so we are some username Pam dash test. And my guess is, hey, let's check out that S3 bucket we already found and let's see if we have further access. So we'll do AWS S3 LS S3. And we can go ahead and grab that same S3 bucket. But we'll do it with uh, profile S3 and Noom. And can we access the admin one now? We can. There's a website transaction export and a flag. I don't know if it's as easy as grabbing that flag, but let's give it a shot. We'll save it to our current directory and just change it from LS to copy. Okay, so that's forbidden. What about website transactions? I'm guessing this is gonna be forbidden too. It is. All right, so let's back up a little bit. We have migration files, which we didn't have access to with our previous account, so let's check that out. And we didn't even have a previous account. We didn't have anonymous access to migration files. Let's see if these creds that we just compromised have access. Maybe if I would learn how to add the slash. Ooh. So we do, we do know it's something with AWS Secrets Manager. Those, I'm not gonna download those, but this looks interesting. This looks interesting. The migrate secrets.ps1 is what we already have, I think, but we have this test export. Hold up. This is reading contents from export. This is a test export, but it could be possible that has creds in it. Let's see if we can grab that test export file. Test export.xml. We'll save it to our current directory. We'll change our LS over to copy. And now let's go to mouse pad test export and we'll back around. Ooh. 
Now, this looks like, hey, you would never find this in the real world. Y'all, you would be surprised how often in pen tests, especially internal pen tests, I find notepad files called passwords.txt, and it's like this. A bunch of passwords and clear text. This stands out to me for our purpose. AWS IT admin. We have another access key and another secret access key. So let's set up another profile. AWS configure profile admin. And we'll go ahead and grab our, I'll zoom in for y'all, our access key ID right here. Our secret access key. And we'll just do US East one again. And let's do it, STS get caller identity, profile admin. So we are the IT admin. Let's go back to this flag, but as our admin user. And it works. Boom. And we have our final flag, but I'm also curious about that other file that was in there. This one. Oh, and here's credit card data. Obviously not real credit cards, but it's showing a company, which is very realistic, storing like what we saw when we were looking at some of the big breaches from um, misconfigured S3 buckets. We have credit card information, expiration stuff, personal identifier information, passwords, username, but of course our final flag right here. So let's go ahead and grab our final flag so we get credit for it. And we'll jump over to this, submit our flag. And there we go, we have completed the challenge. Now, if you were stuck, the cool thing about Polnaz is they have full walkthroughs. And so let's read through some of this. So the real world context, Amazon S3 is a very popular and the second oldest AWS service that uses store files and backups and can be even used to serve websites. This multi-use functionality has led some to argue that this service would be more secure if it were split into separate public web hosting and private file storage services. In recent years, AWS has introduced more visual warnings when customers are making buckets world readable, but still, if the setting is available, people will set it. And yes, they will. Like, once again, Jerry Auger, Carl, right? It's the Carls of the world. Misconfigurations and overly permissive settings in S3 have resulted in many data breaches over the years, which that's what we started our video out is looking at some of those common data breaches. We'll see how they did the walkthrough. So we found that as well. They did the same thing I did. Oh, they did recursive. That's just a list all of them out right away. And then one through one, one by one, like we did. Got the creds. <clears throat> Looks like I followed the official walkthrough pretty closely there. So let's read about defense though. The main issue that caused this data breach was that the S3 bucket was used for different purposes. If a bucket is to be used to host static website files or even directly host the static website itself, it can do this. However, the bucket should then not be used for storage of sensitive files. A separate bucket related to the PAM migration project should have been used instead. The shared directory was world readable, which might've been used to share the migration script with an external contractor or consultant. Even sharing sensitive files open to the internet for a couple of minutes can be a really big risk as scripts and bots can automatically detect changes and download the files. It would be better to share files in a more secure manner and encrypt the zip file with a strong random password. Another issue is that the AWS cards were hard coded directly into the script, allowing anyone on the internet to gain a foothold in the cloud environment. Worse still, an XML export from a secure PAM system was also stored in the bucket and accessible by the first compromised IAM account. The secrets export contained very high privileged credentials for the huge logistics on prem cloud infrastructure, which we noted. It also contained credentials for a second compromised account that had more permissions in the first account aligned access to the unencrypted customer data, exposing their confidential information, potentially leading to financial loss and identity theft. And yo, I believe this is a free lab. I might be wrong there. 
but I think it's a free lab. So even if you don't have a sub, I believe you can do this lab. So if you didn't do it with me, do it yourself. Check it out. I think you'll learn a lot through it. For those of you watching this video on YouTube, thank you for hanging out and learning alongside of me. But this is the end of this video. Hope to catch you in the next one.